Hi, thanks for watching. Okay, so I'd like this video to serve as sort of like an introduction. Um, I'm going to try to make, if, if possible, you know, a series of videos, maybe over the next few weeks or months, um, just sort of presenting an alternative to what I think is sort of, I think the, the defect, the defect with psychology, really. Um, I know that psychology does have, you know, some they have some openness to things like spirituality, you know, and things like philosophy and things outside just the personality, you know. But I think, unfortunately, I think psychology is maybe a little too focused on the personality, I, I believe. OK. And so, um, you know, I'm going to say that my my vision of mental health is a little beyond the personality, actually. Um, I think the personality is just a part of us. I don't think it's all of us. Um, and I think it's really a mistake. It's really a mistake for people to get um, too emphasized in the personality as sort of the, the human experience. The, the human experience is more than just the personality. OK, now the personality is important. OK, but I don't think we solve personality problems by digging into the personality. <laughs> I think if you really want to solve personality problems, I think what we what really will help us is to have perspective so that we're not just just um, nestled into the world of the personality. OK, so in other words, if 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 anybody out there is struggling with a personality issue, whether in themselves or in other people, or if I, let's say, am struggling, I like, say, with my own personality issues. OK, I think sometimes, you know, the the way to to deal with those issues is in part dealing directly with the personality, but also in part having perspective beyond the personalities, okay? Having perspective about personalities, okay? And so I think that, I guess, you know, even though there is some talk of it in psychology, they have their way of, you know, talking about perspective. I really think that um, it's important for all of us, I think, as we deal with personality issues, okay, to really seek not just to fight and struggle directly with personalities, but also to, to find perspective, to find perspective. And in my opinion, the world of perspective around personalities, okay, the space where personalities inhabit, that larger setting, okay, I believe that is the world of the dramatic arts, of let's say literature. Um, I don't like the word literature, okay, because literature is sort of the focus on the the writing and the and the books and the printing. What literature really is is the presentation of the drama, the dramatic, the dramatic circumstances of human spirits, human human characters. Okay, so the, I, I think of it as the world of drama, not the world of literature. I mean, you know, I, I couldn't care less if it's written in a page or if it's in a play, or whatever. It's the presentation in a setting of the different spirits and characters. Okay. So I'll call that the dramatic arts because I don't know a better way. I don't know a better phrase to capture it. So let's say the dramatic arts. But basically, um, I find more um, possibilities in the dramatic arts, okay? Because I think the dramatic arts awaken in us not just an identification with specific personality types, but also the setting, the setting where the personalities come together and interact, okay? And that setting is also a part of us, okay? Um, it's a mistake to think that we as people are just character types, okay? There's a part of us that does identify with different characters, let's say in a play or a movie, okay? But there's also a part of us that identifies with the whole setting, the whole environment where all the different characters sort of interplay and deal with and reconcile and don't reconcile with each other. OK, that is also a part of us, the, the setting, the, the overall environment, you know. And so I think it is a mistake, I think, in psychology. It's a big mistake to reduce people at the ground essence to say that at the ground essence, a person is just a personality. That, I think, is a mistake. I think also part of us, we also have environmental consciousness, OK? And I think that part of the human psyche, the, the human mind, is also the environment. We identify not just with people, but also the environment. OK, and so I think that um, something important to discover in us is that we, we may have personalities and some of us may have bad personalities. OK, I think I have a shitty personality, actually. I, I do. I, I'm not even afraid to say it. 
or at least if I even even if I don't even have just one personality, but even the, the part of me that is sort of susceptible to personality, let's say, call it the personality part of me. I think I wish I had much better. I think I have I, I think I have a terrible temperament. I think I have a tendency to be kind of narcissistic. I think I have a tendency to be over over flooded with with my enthusiasms and my immediate concerns. And, and I just don't think I have a great personality, but I am not just a personality. OK, there is also a part of me that has an identification with the overall setting and environment. OK, and that's also part of me. OK, it's not just a personality and nobody is just a personality now. Over time and through the way we're raised in our Western culture, we may come to believe and we may become come to operate like we are just a personality. OK, but there is more to each person. And I think we need to really own that. And I don't know that psychology really offers us a, a very I don't think I don't think psychology offers us a very clearly emphasized a message that we are more than our personalities okay there is more to us than any personality or even the the area of our of our psyche that is sort of susceptible to personality there is more we are also the setting we also have identification with the overall setting so that we can have reflection and perspective on the interaction of the spirits and I say the spirits, okay? I do say the spirits, okay? Because I think that, you know, psychology, we, we're so infected and we're so, um, we're so influenced by psychology that we've come to think of humans as almost like these clinical specimens. We are not clinical specimens, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that, that the actual universe is just a cartoon of ghosts interacting, okay? Now, that's maybe just a bunch of bullshit and maybe also just kind of a fantasy, okay? I'm just saying that the, the, the psychic reality for humans, okay, the phenomenology for humans is the interplay of spirits, okay? It's not just personalities. They are spirits, okay? Because they're very much, they're very much abstracted from individual experience, okay? Um, you know, and I think we need to respect that. The personality, I would say the personality um, archetypes the personality paradigms in the world are beyond any individual. Okay. And I think we need to respect that those are spirits. Okay. And I think it's important when we watch, like say good movies, good movies, you know, good TV shows that we are witness in a sense, thanks to the gift of the actors and the gift of the directors and the gift of the writers who actually through their art are actually making the spirits come alive for us to witness so that we can witness the interaction of spirits. OK, so I think that's very important. And I think as we become witness to the interaction of spirits, I think it's very important that we don't just identify with certain spirits. OK, yes, we will. We will sometimes if I watch, like, say, certain movies, I'm going to identify with some characters more than others. That will happen. OK, but parallel to that and simultaneous to that, while I may have my identification, that's just a part of me. A part of me is identifying with certain characters. Another part of me is identifying with the setting, the overall setting and the environment where all the different spirits sort of come together and deal and reconcile and don't reconcile. And so I think it's very important for us to also realize that also in us, in our psyche, is the identification with and the reality and the phenomenology of the setting of the spirits, the the space and the um, how would you say? Yeah, I would say the setting. You know, the the space where all the spirits sort of play and come together, sort of the environment of the spirits. Okay, and so to me, that is spirituality. All right, that is spirituality, and I think that um, spirituality is precisely what in our psyche is beyond the world of personality or you know specific personality potential that we all have. Okay, so in the next few months. Um, I'd like to present sort of my alternative to mental health, which is sort of the world of spirituality, but as we see it in the dramatic arts, okay, um, as we see it in the dramatic arts and using what I think are very useful sort of um, sort of very magical examples of the dramatic arts where there are just a lot of um, spirits coming together in one setting and where I think the emphasis is as much on the spiritual setting as it is on the specific characters, okay. And so I find that, you know, some very rich examples where you see sort of um, 
sort of a de-emphasis of particular characters and sort of an increased emphasis on the environment of the characters, which I would think of as a spiritual setting, I think is the one example is the Rockford Files. Okay, the Rockford Files is a, a tremendous example of this. Um, and I think there are some other really good examples. You know, um, I get a lot of inspiration from Raymond Ch Chandler. Raymond Chandler was sort of like this uh, amazing uh, alcoholic, um, you know, very troubled, very, you know, kind of a, a unsuccessful person who, because of his alcoholism, he failed as a business person in, in California. He was actually from England. But he was a, an expat from England living in the United States, trying to make it in the 1920s as a, uh, I think, an oil executive. And he, you know, because of his alcoholism, his personality, he failed, but he had a tremendous gift and he was able to create um, basically sort of really create almost the, the paradigm of the hard boiled defect detective fiction um, through his um, through his novels. Um, uh basically set in southern california okay so that that really is i think a precursor to what became the rockford files okay a precursor it wasn't like it was had to be the rockford files but the rockford files was sort of in that in that tradition um and i and the and the rockford files also uh brought uh brought another dimension which is um from a television show called maverick which was from the 1950s which sort of presented kind of an alternative to the Ton of, sort of the, the paradigm cowboy hero, sort of like an alternative to John Wayne, you know, somebody who's not afraid to maybe run away from a gunfight or, you know, whatever, kind of an anti-hero. But these are these are kind of like weird spiritual alternatives that, that sort of in a way that kind of create a little bit of um, distance from, let's say, you know, very crystallized uh, characters, very crystallized spirits. And I think those are the sorts of maneuvers that sort of create more of an emphasis on the broader spiritual um, environment. OK, and I think another aspect is that um, when we do ridiculize characters, OK, where, you know, I think in a sense, I think James Garner kind of ridiculized the John Wayne cowboy in, in a sense, you know. But sometimes ridiculousness is very healthy because it's a way of sort of putting in perspective things that we think are so sacred. And by having space from the sacred, you know, and seeing the larger environment of the spirits, okay, sometimes we'll end up sort of seeing the ridiculousness of, um, of particular character positions, okay? And I think that's one of the byproducts of true spirituality is you get a little bit of a sense of ridiculousness. Um, and so all these things and all this magic, you know, kind of comes together in this very, um, this, this almost like this, this wizardry, this wizardry that, that sort of uh, was able to come through in the Rockford Files, where for whatever reason, they sort of stumbled on, you know, sort of this cocktail of a little bit of Raymond Chandler, California, and a little bit of this sort of ridiculousness from the Maverick uh, TV show kind of ridiculizing the John Wayne sort of, um, you know, sort of stereotype of the, of the hero. And, and basically they came up with, a, I think, a very spiritual environment, sort of spiritual magic, so to speak, you know, where we get to see spirits, but in context. OK, and I think that environment, that environment of the spirits, I think, is very healthy for us to identify with, especially if we're struggling with the personality. OK. I don't think anything can save us from having a crappy temperament. Okay. If we have a crappy temperament, we got a crappy temperament. I don't think there's any, there's no rescue, but as we deal with these things, okay, I think it's very helpful not just to try to struggle within the world of the personality. Okay. And also to sort of open us up to maybe the, the setting and the environment of the spirits. Okay. Because that gives us space. So we don't have to be hostage just to our shitty personality, basically, you know, and I think it's not going to save us always because I mean, our, our spirits are still very powerful, but it's a tool. It's an added space. It's an added resource. OK, so I think the spirituality is very important. It's, it's not like a be all end all. It's not just going to magically save anybody, but it's, it's another tool in the toolbox because in the end, you know, we just need to make the best of our resources. But. I feel that psychology sort of underemphasizes the resource of the spiritual setting, the spiritual environment. Okay, so, so as we uh, move in the, to these future videos where I'm going to focus on the Rockford Files, because I think it's just a very magical um, environment and I think a, and a, a wonderful vehicle for really explaining 
what I think is spirituality and philosophy. Philosophy to me is when you sort of take the spiritual perspective, okay, and you sort of make it real in your life, where it's not just that you appreciate the spiritual perspective, but you actually then take it on and suffer it, basically, in, in your life. And actually sort of, um, you know, learn from it in, in living terms, you know, by living it. And, uh, and that can be very painful. You know, it's very easy to appreciate uh, a wonderful spiritual presentation. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to appreciate a, a great TV show and it's very inspiring. But then to actually take all those things on in oneself and actually put them into practice, you know, sort of make, make benefit of that, of that uh, perspective is actually, I think, very painful. And that's where the drama becomes real in us. And that, that's where we have to condition ourselves on a dramatic level. And I think as we develop conditioning and have our learning sort of um, incarnated into us through conditioning, I think that's where philosophy actually becomes real. And I think that's where we have the full learning, the full learning through lived experience of the inspirations of spiritual you know, witness. Okay, so... So basically, I would like to, um, you know, really focus on the Rockford Files because I think that's that's got to be one of the most underappreciated and one of the most amazing examples of spiritual wizardry that I have seen in the 20th century. And I, I haven't seen anything. I think Breaking Bad was pretty, pretty amazing, but I think it was a little cartoonish compared to the Rockford Files. The Rockford Files was really a pretty amazing show. And I also would like to um, to look at two other examples that I think were were not on the exact same level, but, but I think we're very good examples um, from the 20th century, which is the, the 1964 movie, uh, The Night of the Iguana um, by uh, Tennessee Williams wrote, wrote the play and it was adapted and, and the movie was directed by John Houston and it was made in Mexico. It was really, really wonderful movie um, where again, you know, because of the, the wizardry of Tennessee Williams and the magic of John Houston, they brought a lot of, really contrasting characters together in one tight setting. And that's amazing. Um, when you can have, like, say, a setting or environment where you can get all these different incompatible spirits, that is the richest um, space, I think, for philosophical learning um, and for spiritual insight. Okay, so I think that's a very spiritual movie. And another, um, another movie that I thought was pretty magical, and I think very much in the tradition of Raymond Chandler, but I think more James Cain, um, if, you, if you guys can remember the movie um, uh, Double Indemnity from the 1940s, Fred McMurray, and I uh, always forget her name, um, the actress, but it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, just a wonderful movie, um, uh, Double Indemnity, but it was adapted into a retro noir movie. Uh, thriller uh starring uh, in 1981 1981 imagine it, it was a retro noir with kind of retro noir mu music um and um it was starring um uh oh my god my brain <laughs> this is terrible no it starred william hurt and kathleen turner okay and it was just um just a magical movie because you know i guess borrowing from or i guess taking inspiration from the noir, the film noir sort of hard-boiled um ethos you know that that is kind of the raymond chandler ethos basically um they succeeded in bringing a lot of amazing uh, spirits you know a lot of different spirits into one uh, one dramatic space and i think um the i guess the the hero anti-hero or the the protagonist downfall the downfallen protagonist, um, while he was kind of a chump and he was, he did end up being kind of a loser in this movie. And at the end he had the, he was the only person who had the gift of full insight into the picture, which I think is amazing. And I think so, even though the, the main character is, is sort of like a, a loser, a chump, a downfallen, um, he does in the end demonstrate the, the only master insight into the whole picture of, of all these spirits coming together. And so I think in a sense, he transcends character. And so it is a very spiritual, um, sort of a spiritual experience to see what happens to that character, even though he, he ends up in tragic circumstances. Um, and likewise, I think in Night of the Iguana, 
in the United Iguana, if you guys are interested in looking at that, the main character is a downfallen uh, reverend, uh, P- Episcopal reverend, um, Episcopal priest, I guess. And he's downfallen uh, for sexual reasons. But in the end, he, he goes through, let's say, uh, a spiritual journey and he has, I guess, spiritual insight. Now, in, dr- in dramatic movies, okay, um, there's very limited philosophy in the world of the dramatic arts because what they do is they just present the spiritual situation. Okay. And that's just for us to take and do what we will, you know, most of the time we just appreciate it and nothing really happens, but, you know, to take the next step and to take spiritual insights and actually apply them in our lives and, and open ourselves to them. Okay. Now that, that, that conditioning and that, 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 how would you say that transformation that we go through, I think that is where philosophy becomes real. And so, you know, it's not enough just to appreciate these, these gifts of vision, but you know, a gift of vision is only worth what we, what we do with it. Okay. So I would like to talk over the next few months about, you know, sort of my alternative to psychology, which is really looking more to the spiritual. Okay. And the world of the spirits. And I think that, um, if we're going to have any hope, okay. I think that, you know, I believe that all personalities are narcissistic. Okay. I think all personalities are narcissistic, you know, um, just because there are some personalities that just by their nature are more empathetic or they're more, uh, they fit in better. They're more socially adaptable. That doesn't mean that you're not stuck in a personality. Okay. And I think that, um, there's sort of like a broader kind of like a spiritual narcissism, where even if you have a good personality, um, being stuck in a personality is a limitation. Okay. And I think that we also need to emphasize the, the world of our um, spiritual environment and our spiritual setting, setting, setting an environment that also has to be emphasized because that no matter how wonderful our personality is, because there are personalities that are just inherently so diplomatic and they're just so well adapted, but it still is a limitation to be too much, um, too much like set in your own character. Okay. Because there is another part of the psyche, which is the environment of all the characters. Okay. And so I think that if you are gifted with just a wonderful personality, I still think it's important that we understand that part of our psyche is the whole setting. Okay. The whole setting, the whole environment of all the personalities, because I think even though there are some personalities that specifically do have a lot of, uh, let's say, empathy and you know understanding, and they're very diplomatic, it's nothing compared to like the level of um, I don't know how would you say I, I don't want to say empathy, but I just want to say the level of understanding and perspective that comes from being identified with the whole setting and the whole environment of the spirits. I think that's more powerful. I think that perspective is more powerful than just empathy. Okay. Cause I think it's, it's more, it's more comprehensive. You know what I mean? And I think it's, um, it's sort of seeing everything, you know, see, seeing everything from a disinterested and, a, and an unlocated perspective, you know? And so it's, it's like having, it's like the perspective of not being in a particular position. You know what I mean? So I think that, um, in my opinion, I think spirituality is kind of the missing aspect, I think, of, of mental health or psychic health. And I think that's just because, just because the tradition of psychology, it comes from maybe kind of a kind of an intellectual materialist uh, tradition. And so and also I think that, you know, for a lot of psychologists, I think they feel it's not their territory to get into spiritual issues because, oh, that's the territory of, you know, let's say religious people, whatever. And I think we need to challenge that. I think we need to challenge that and we need to see uh, spirituality in very practical terms. And I don't, I don't know of a better place to, to see spirituality than in excellent, excellent dramatic arts, because dramatic arts are nothing less than the presentation of the spirits, presenting the spirits for us to witness in their setting, in their environment, interacting. Okay. So I think it's very important just as a step one that we, not only identify with and maybe dislike certain characters, you know, how many people watch Breaking Bad and they identified with Walter White and they hated Skyler, you know, or they identified with Hank and they hated, you know, whatever. I mean, how we, we know, we know what, we know what it's like to identify with and not like we identify, identify with some characters. We have sympathy for some characters. We don't like other characters. We are in it. That's a spiritual witness. We are witnessing spirits. Okay. But 
how many of us, apart from our sympathies for some and our dislike for other spirits, how many of us also internalize the setting of the spirits? Okay, the environment of the spirits is that also to be internalized, not just our sympathy with a particular spirit. You know what I mean? And and then how much of us like like actually um, put into practice, let's say the the insight of of having that that or like say put into practice the 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 consequences of having an environmental vision and not just being nestled into personality. You know what I mean? I think these are these are things that that um, that we need to consider. Um, and you know, I don't think there's anything that's magically easily uh gonna help us in life okay in other words if we're struggling with the personality i don't think just having this spiritual perspective is just going to magically make things super easy for us i think life is very hard okay and i think actually um you know paradoxically i think if we do take on the actual broader spiritual perspective okay and if we do identify and put into practice our identification with the, the broader environment of the spirits okay i think we will we will actually invite maybe more taxation and maybe more pain and and strain than if we just live in the world of the personality but in my opinion i think that taxation and that burden i think is worth it in the end if we can handle the conditioning of it because it'll have to really condition us and so i think you know unfortunately i think the road to to maybe improving ourselves may involve you know at first maybe taking on a lot more um and maybe maybe feeling like crap you know but i think through time and through faith i think as we take on the consequences of a broader perspective okay the pain and the strain and the taxation of a broader perspective, I think that over time we'll see that it does produce benefit. Okay. And so then it becomes a trade-off where, you know, things will be more beneficial and the world will be a better place if people take on more the, the overall environmental taxation and not just be sitting in the world of, of a particular personality type or a particular personality um, you know, potential, basically, you know, personality, personality potential. So I think that, um, you know, I think that in a funny way, I think, you know, the answer for, for all of us, I think is, is even, even if we have a healthy personality is I think to, uh, explore the overall perspective around personalities. Okay. And to take on the taxation of that perspective, because that, that's just more information. And I think it's more, it's a different place to be. And I think it's a different part of us that I think is very underemphasized. Okay. And I think that, um, you know, you either catch the faith or you don't catch the faith that it's a better place to be, even though it's, 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 it's more grueling, let's say it's more of a grind and it's more grueling and it's, it's more of a strain, but it's actually a better place to be because the more people identify with the setting of the spirits, as opposed to particular spirits, I think that that will be um, a place of more, um, how would you say, like, like it'll, it'll be a, a place where people are taking on more, like say, broader information and broader taxation. And then there, and that's a field that's that's richer for for a deeper level of, um, I would say, um, I would say a richer, a richer uh, field of processing so that people become deeper and people become, um, you know, through, through long m metabolizing a broader range of information and a broader depth of information. And I think that will make people um, a lot richer and a lot more profound. You know what I mean? But, but again, I mean, it's not going to cure you from having a crappy temperament. So, you know, even though you might be more profound, your, your temperament may still be what it is, but at least it's, it's more tools and it's more resources, I think, for us to develop as people. So not to get anybody's hopes up, but, you know, anyway, but in the next uh, month or so, you know, hopefully, I hope I can do it. You know, I'd like to really use these, these masterpieces of spiritual wizardry to really sort of present I think an alternative to just looking at people is just personalities, okay? And really kind of um, show how real and how alive and how, how rich is the world of the, the larger spiritual context, the world of spiritual perspective. So I'm sure that wasn't as, as, uh, that wasn't as eloquent as I'd like it to be, but I do my best. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I look forward to the next videos because I, I really, I think these, these masterpieces, the, the Rockford Files, The Night of the Iguana, um, this movie called Body Heat, um, 
I think they're, they're really inspiring and, and hopefully um, I can help communicate that. So anyway, thanks for watching.